All right. So in this video, I would like to talk about manipulating lists. So we've already talked about how we can create lists, but there are lots and lots of ways of manipulating lists or building up upon lists. And I would just like to show you a few of those options. The first thing I would like to show you is how to duplicate data. All right, so let's say we have this list but what we actually want to have is this sequence of numbers repeated several times. Um, and then you can take this duplicate block, plug in the data, and then just tell it how many times it's supposed to repeat it. So by default, this is two. And it will simply duplicate that list we have here from zero to eight over to here and plug it in behind. And if we tell it to do it three times, of course, we get three lists. There is an interesting option here, which says retain list order. And if I use a toggle switch to change that to false, you can see that it actually, it previously was like this, where it would take the first list and then stick it on the, the back of it again. If we do that to false, it will take that first item copy it twice, second item, copy it twice, and so forth. Now, another thing you can do, I'm just going to delete this, is we can repeat data. And this takes data and then a target length. So this, I, this list right now has got five entries, so I'm just going to tell it that I want to have a list of 12 entries and it'll repeat my original list as many times as needed to get those 12 items. So we'll only have half a list of the original or two fifths of the original list here at the end. And we can do this to arbitrary lengths, right? Just two ways to take uh, the basic input of a list and then repeat that as many times as you need. So what I would like to now show you requires a few points. I'm going to take the input of this list to construct some points. So I'm going to plug these values into the X value. And by doing that, we're going to get this list of points which move along in the X direction. And I'm going to do that twice, but I'm going to give the second one a Y coordinate 5. Oops, there we go. And now um, I'm going to connect these with a polyline. And if I put in these, I get a straight line connecting the bottom, uh, the bottom points. And I can now take the other set of points, shift, and then it will attach those lists together. All right, so I've got one list and I'm attaching a second list to that and putting it in here and it creates a list with 10 entries and puts a polyline through all of it. Now I can do this with shift, but at some stage, it, if as soon as you plug in more than two and the order of those different data streams comes important, it's usually a good idea to use the merge block. So I can actually do the same thing by putting these two here and then it automatically adds another one for a third data stream and then plug the polyline into the back of that and we get the same result. All right. Now, let's say I don't want to simply attach these two lists end to end or, or end to start, but I want to alternate between these two. Well, for that, we can use a weave. So, and what the weave does is it takes two lists and weaves them together with a certain pattern. So the default pattern is take um, one from the zero list and then one from the one list and then repeat that pattern until we've exhausted both lists. So if I now plug this into the polyline, what we'll get is this. So it's 
taken one from the bottom, then one from the top. Bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top. And I'm now going to create a panel to change this pattern. So right now, the pattern looks like this. All right. Remember to right click and then go on multi-line data. So this won't change anything. It's still the same pattern. And let's say we want to have it the other way around. Two ways of doing that. We can actually just double click here and change those values, or we can go right click and say reverse, and then it will go in the other direction. Now, personally, I think it's nicer to simply change these values here because then it's more visible and easier to understand for somebody reading your code. And let's do a different pattern. The pattern doesn't have to be only too long. We can create patterns of arbitrary length. So let's go 0, 1, 1, 0. And let's loop that. And then we get something like this. So it's going 0, 1, 1, 0. Starting again from the beginning. So 0, 1, 1, 0. 0, 1, and then it would go on 1 again, and so forth. Now, so far we've talked about combining entries from multiple lists. Let's now talk about kicking items out of a list. This is called culling. And for that, I'm going to hide all of this and go back to our paneled wall. Here we go. Hello, there we go. There we go. There. So let's say I want to remove some of these, um, let's call them stories, out of the array. Let's put a few more here. There we go. I think that's six. Now, there's different ways of culling, and I'm going to go through a few of them. So I'm first going to start with cull inf. And what this does is it takes a list and then it culls, it takes a certain frequency. So the default is two. So every second entry in the list is going to be removed. So if we hide this, you can see that actually this looks more easy to understand. So it will now remove every second entry on that list and it will repeat that no matter how long that list is. And we can change that to B3, for example. Here we go, three. Um, if you don't want to have this be um, actually a parameter that you change, but you want it to be something a little bit more static in your program, it's usually also a nice idea to use a panel instead. And just go three, make that slightly smaller and then plug it in. That way it's more obvious that you don't want to frequently change the value. So yes, that's the first way of culling things. Now, the second way of culling things is using a pattern. So just as before, we plug in the list and then we give it a pattern. And the default pattern is false, false, true, true. So Um, this false and true is called a boolean. So it's something that's only got two states. And these two states can either be described as false and true, or you can use zero and one. Doesn't matter. So if we want to create our own pattern, we can once again um, go into our panel and say zero, um, zero, one. Okay, go to multi-line data, there we go, put that in, and then you can see that it only keeps every third item, right? And we can use the pattern we used before, zero, one, one, zero, and then it will kick out the first one, keep two, kick out one, start again, kick out one, keep to, and so forth. Now, if you don't want to have something that repeats regularly, you're going to have to start culling individual indices. So the same way we can get access 
to a list item by using the, the list item command and giving an index. We can also cull things with an index. So let's kick this out and then go to cull index. So I'm going to put the list here. And then let's say I want to remove the, the first row, which would be then index zero. And then maybe the fourth one, which is then index three, because we always start counting at zero. And then also that one. There we go. Put those in. Here we go. So we kicked out the index zero and then index three and four. Now here's a cool thing. See how the counting always starts at zero? We can also count backwards. And in this case, the last entry of a list will have the index of minus one. So if I type in here minus one and then minus three, minus four, it'll remove the last item in the list and then the third to last item and the fourth to last item. There you go. So that's just a few ways to manipulate data, repeat lists, and then use indices to remove items from lists or patterns to remove or merge different data entries of a list. Thank you for watching.